Hello, lovely one. Let me teach you how to solve this tricky equation, okay? Now, when you have this, see what you do. So we're going to begin with solution, okay? Now, what do you do? Just remember that each time you have a variable without any power, it is the same as having a power of 1. So for this, this is the same as p to the power of 1 multiplied by p to the power of 1 minus p to the power of 1 multiplied by p to the power of 1 and everything is equal to 2. Remember, for every a to the power of m multiplied by this, it is a to the power of m plus n. You add the powers when they are multiplying. So since these are multiplying, we can just add these powers. So it's going to give us p to the power of 1 plus 1. We have p to the power of 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So we are going to have p to the power. Add this, it gives you 2. Add this, it gives you 3. And everything is equal to 2. You see, this has led you to a degree 3 polynomial. Okay? You see that the highest power of p is 3. So let me teach you how to solve this degree 3 polynomial equation. And in this teaching, I'm going to show you how to use the long division method. I would, you wouldn't want to miss what you want to do now. So to use the long division method, what do you do first? We need to take this to the left side. It's positive, so we are going to subtract. And that will give us p squared minus p cubed minus 2 is equal to 0. So we have to rearrange this so that the one with the highest power begins. And if you do that, you have, remember, this p squared is carrying positive. This p cube is carrying negative and 2 is negative. So if you rearrange, you go with this sign. So we have negative p cubed plus p squared minus 2 is equal to 0. So what we do at this point is, we are going to find, use the factors of this number 2 to substitute using the trial and error methods. To do that, let me show you. So for this 2, we can use numbers like plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. These are the numbers we can use for P to check when we plug this value, which of them will be equal to 0. Then if we get any of them that gives us 0, that one becomes a factor. Okay, so what do we do? We are going to have it for, let's check from when it is positive 1. So we have negative P and our P is 1. So we are having P as 1. So we have negative 1 will be cubed. Remember, it is P that is cubed, not with the sign. Okay, so we have plus 1 squared minus 2. This will give us negative 1 plus 1 minus 2, and this will give us negative 2, which is not equal to 0. So it means that this is not a solution. So let's also check for when P is negative 1. Plug it here, we're going to have negative already in this. Your P is negative, so we're going to have negative 1 cubed, okay, plus negative 1 squared minus 2. Let's see if this gives us 0. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1 multiplied 3 times, and that will give us negative 1. So we're going to have negative into negative 1 plus negative 1 squared is when you multiply 2 times, gives you positive 1, then minus 2. So if you simplify this, it gives you, this will give you 1 plus 1 minus 2, and when you add this, is equal to 0. So it means that P being negative 1, is one of the solutions. Remember, this is cubic. So it's, we expected to have three values of P. So since this becomes a solution, we are going to turn it to be a factor. So in that case, if P is equal to negative 1, then if you take this to the left side, P plus 1 becomes a what? A factor. So we are going to use this to find the remaining solutions. We have gotten one value of P as negative 1. So let's find the remaining two solutions for this equation. And that is where the long division comes in. So to use our long division, see what we have. So we're going to have, this is what we have. This is the equation we have, okay? So you draw your line, put this inside, put this equation inside. You have negative P cubed 
plus p squared minus 2. Okay, this part is what you put inside here. Then use this factor to divide. I hope you are with me. Now, what do you do? The rule for the long division is DMS. So let's take it here. DMS. And what does it mean? When you divide, you multiply and then you subtract. So this is going to be a guide. Okay. So let's take the first process. So we're going to divide. Use this first term here to divide the first term, the dividend, the first term of the dividend. And then when you are multiplying, you multiply the whole divisor. Okay. So let's take that. P will divide negative P cubed. And that will give us negative P squared. Use this to multiply the two. This will give us negative P cubed. Use this to multiply. It gives us negative P squared. The next is to subtract. So if you subtract, you have to be careful because there are a lot of subtraction signs. So we're going to have negative P cubed. Take away negative P cubed. You see that negative will multiply negative and it becomes positive. So this is what we have. And when you add this up, it gives you zero. So this is equal to zero. So it means subtracting this has become zero. So what do you do next? You now go to this. So we have P squared take away negative P squared. So we have P squared take away negative P squared. This will give us P squared plus P squared. And that is 2P squared. So for subtracting this, we have... 2p squared. So we have 2p squared here. Then you bring down negative 2. Repeat the process again. So we're going to use the first term of the divisor to divide the first term of the dividend. Okay. So p will divide p squared, 2p squared, and that will give us positive 2p. Okay. So let's multiply this. We're going to have 2p squared. Use this to multiply. We have 2p. So what do you do? Subtract. So we subtract this. This subtract will give us zero. Then we have, you see, there is no term for 2p in this upper part. But you can adjust this expression to suit it. And in that case, you can still do this as 0p minus 2. You have not changed anything. This means that the coefficient of p is zero. And 0p is the same as 0. So it hasn't changed anything. It's just for easy subtraction. So we have 0p minus 2p. We give us negative 2p. Then you bring down negative 2. Repeat the process again. So we're going to have p. We divide negative 2p. And when it divides, it gives us negative 2. Use this to multiply. So let's take it to this part. So negative 2 multiplies p. We give us negative 2p. Please, let's repeat this up here, okay? Just to ease our subtraction. Then negative 2 multiplies 2. Multiplies 1 gives us negative 2. Then we subtract. If you subtract this, it gives you 0. And this will give you 0. So you see, since there is no remainder, it truly means that this is a factor. And that the solution for p as negative 1 is correct. Now let's solve this quadratic to get the remaining solutions for the equation. So we're going to have negative p squared plus 2p minus 2 is equal to 0. This is your quadratic. The highest power of p is 2. So to solve this, we can choose to clear this negative sign. And to do that, we multiply by negative 1. So if you multiply this by negative 1, it gives you p squared this will give us negative 2p, and this will give us positive 2. If you multiply this, it gives you 0. So what do you do next? Just remember this formula that for F, your p is equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. We are going to plug this into this formula to get the remaining values of p. And don't forget to like this video. Let's also know what you feel about it in the comments. Share with your friends and let's continue. So here, our a is always the coefficient of your p squared, which is 1. Your b is the coefficient of p, which is negative 2. And your c is the constant, which is 2. 
So plug this into the formula. We are going to have P will give us negative in the formula. Your B, remember, is negative. Okay, so you have to be careful. Plus or minus square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 multiplies our A is 1. Then our C is 2. Everything is divided by 2 multiplied by 1. So if you keep simplifying, this gives us B is equal to 2 plus or minus square root of negative 2 squared is negative 2 multiplied 2 times to give us 4. When you multiply this, it gives us negative 8 and this is divided by 2. So this gives us P is equal to 2 plus or minus. Subtract this, it gives you negative 4 is divided by 2. Now you see that there is a negative sign in the square root. It means this is leading to a complex solution. So to remove that, it means that P is 2 plus or minus square root of, this is the same as negative 1 multiplied by 4, and that is divided by 2. Now you have to remember that when you have root of A multiplied by B, it is the same as root of A multiplied by root of B. So applying it here, we have P is equal to 2 plus or minus root of, we can apply this here, root of negative 1 multiplied by root of 4 divided by 2. Now remember that when you have this, it is always represented with I. This is the imaginary unit. So replace it here. It becomes P will give us 2 plus or minus. This will be I. And square root of 4 is 2 divided by 2. And this is the same as 2 divided by 2 plus or minus. This will be 2I divided by 2. Okay? So it becomes P is equal to, if you divide this, remember when you divide the number by itself is 1, plus or minus, divide this, you have I. Okay? So if you simplify, finally, we have, so the first value of P is equal to negative 1. Then we have the second value of P will be 1 plus I. And then the third value of P is 1 minus I. So these are the three solutions for this equation. These two are the complex solution, okay? Then because you see they contain the imaginary part and the real part. So that makes it complex. And this contains a real part, okay? Just a real number, which can be found on a number line. And I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like this video. And if you are still new, subscribe for more tips. Thank you for always engaging. And I'll also be curious to see your own method of solving this in the comments. I will always be there to read what you say. Thank you for engaging. See you in our next class. Bye-bye.